Hello, my name is Nevis and this is a recording part of the TESOL EVO 2017 sessions. Specifically in the Teaching EFL to Young Learners in the Moodle course created by Dr Nellie Deutsch of which I am one of the moderators and presenter for week three. My presentation is called Board Games and it's part of the TEFL to Young Learners EVO session 2017 in the Moodle. Board games to some are a thing of the past and most of us participating in this year's EVO sessions, whether as active participants or moderators or session mentors or leaders, have at one time or another in our youth actually played and enjoyed board games. From the humble drafts or checkers, snakes and ladders to Monopoly, Trivial Pursuit, Pictionary, Scrabble, chess, the list goes on. Nowadays, many of you will argue that the advent of digital games from Pac-Man and the Mario Brothers, that we are now in an era, era with a highly digitised generation that paper-based games may really seem trivial in the face of complex games like Minecraft, for example. However, for the younger generation, a paper-based game created wholly by the members of that class may be just as complex in their learning apprehension. After all, we do learn far better by doing, hence being active learners as opposed to passive learning in the classroom. It is another fact to note that during holiday breaks, or especially holidays with family-oriented activities, the old board games always seem to raise their heads and be played even with some fervour by all the members of the family. Games in all its forms elicits a general sense of active participation with a touch of competitiveness, something which most children love to put themselves to the test. Sometimes just sitting back and watching a family get together on the dinner table during a lazy summer to play Monopoly can be quite mesmerising. Immediately you'll hear things like, I want to be the bank. I want the car token. I want to roll the dice first. It was your turn last time, now it's mine. It's not fair. She keeps landing on the properties I want. Where did you get all that money? And so on. We as teachers need to harness this focus and engagement for a game within the classroom activities. So what better way to do that by getting the whole class to reinvent a classic game like Snakes and Ladders, beginning with something simple that that's quick to complete, then leading up into a more complex game like a type of Trivial Pursuit or Monopoly for example, the themes and ideas are simply endless. Let your students' imagination run wild as you pull the lead to and fro, keeping the harness a little loose but firmly gripped onto the basics of educational instruction. Good luck. Now let's move the slides over. Children play anywhere, anytime. The best thing about a physical game is that they can actually play it without electricity and especially no Wi-Fi. And as I was saying before, you can make your own or you can buy them. Children like to play board games with their friends and with their families. The holidays is always a great time to play. Everyone is relaxed, enjoying the break from work or school, so it's the perfect environment. 
from young to teens there is no limit on age groups nor gender everyone can play a board game for all levels and all ages making your own do-it-yourself board game is just as easy it can be quite fun for elementary school children making something is also visible gratification then playing will add to the learning process what you as the teacher will need to have on hand is a basic a basic creative kit which consists of scissors stanley knife strong glue or glue gun old large buttons example from discarded clothing drawing pins pin tacks strings and ribbons you the teacher can also create the basis for the board game like an s shape oval or square shapes triangles etc on your own computer for example and print it for them for the class then leave the design of the game to the students however i like to create a simple one first to show how it is complete and what can be used once i glued an old shortened uh, once i glued old shortened pencils onto a large coat buttons and covered them to act as the moving pins on the board don't forget the almighty dice which can also be created by hand using cardboard and printed paper panels let's have a look at how we can use board games for efl how we can actually use the game to elicit or language learning theory and related discussions there's been a lot of talk um, around understanding whether the game the board games and learning a language has really any uh, basis scientific basis but putting that aside just for a moment if we just look at what's available around us and some experience from other teachers who have blogged about their experiences online we come across a multitude of information that we can see how other teachers how other teachers just like us have been able to use board games to create movement in the classroom engagement and be able to increase simple things like vocabulary elicit speaking grammar points that sometimes are harder to learn in a normal classroom textbook approach games somehow make it seem more like a fun activity games can also be a way of looking at authentic learning which is allowing students to explore discuss and construct concepts and relationships in contexts that involve real world situations and projects that are relevant to them and that's what's important too the main problems with learning a foreign language such as english is always about the basic structures and the amount of vocabulary that the second language introduces into the memory banks of each child or student as language classes are often limited to two or three hours a week the retention of new vocabulary is much more difficult than learning on and memorizing new words as they would for their first language board games can be created to actually reinforce these in a simple and relaxed relaxed atmosphere like playing a game some ideas or themes that you can create board games on are learning vocabulary phrase construction phrasal verbs collocations tenses conditionals adjectives irregular verbs nouns numbers and some of the objectives that we can aim for in these 
board games is to elicit speech to enhance memory, memory retention of those new structures, repetition in a relaxed mode. We can aim to build on basic grammar, reinforce fluency, reinforce pronunciation, image descriptions and build on small talk. Small talk um, I like to refer to as those remarks that are made when we're in a relaxed state that those little phrases that don't really have a beginning or an ending but sort of like something like what I was talking about at the beginning of this talk things like little phrases something like it was my turn that's not fair you're winning wow look at that they're sort of language exclamations and phrases that are normal in someone's first language but when we're learning a new language there's no real way of teaching that unless we're in a relaxed situation where the general feeling is to be able to say something that comes naturally even if it's disjointed even if it's not a structured phrase and that is one way of building confidence in that second language. Games are fun. They promote a relaxed environment. Games are competitive, which help to promote that natural competitiveness. Games can be challenging, creating new paths in learning. Games are, can be group oriented and that can help to promote social bonding. Games are easy to introduce new vocabulary. Games are, are another way to reinforce grammatical forms. Games are good to learn phrasal verbs. Games are great to instigate spoken forms like natural communication. Games are an excellent tool for teacher to complement a topic. These are just some of the reasons why games are fun to play. Real life skills are so important that most can be acquired via game based learning, and these are planning, strategy, commitment engagement, focus, problem solving, decision making, communication, teamwork, creativity, leadership, critical thinking, collaboration, negotiation, responsibility, inquiry by asking questions, cultural awareness, peer-to-peer -peer learning, to be able to take charge of their learning and to be more confident. These are skills that we as adults know about, but we need to elicit these in our younger generation, give them the tools to be able to reinforce these skills that are part of any working community, any study community later on in their lives. Games also have some drawbacks. The drawbacks may seem negative, but there is always a positive and a negative to any situation. So, as any other learning activity within the classroom. So, sometimes it may even depend on where you are situated or what that class is doing in that particular area or year and how the students and teachers are able to communicate. These are all underlying factors that do, however, add to either a positive or a negative outcome. 
We as teachers must be aware of our surroundings and we are there to create the proper pers perspective in the learning environment for the students. Always changing and adapting to ensure that the focus is on the student's learning curve. So we are the ones that can make it happen. And we are the ones that unfortunately will have an extra workload if we want to take on board games and create board games that will fit in with our yearly curriculum. Um, I know that some of you may be saying I don't need any extra work but believe me once you get into making a board game the first time the second one just keeps getting second and third they just keep getting easier so and they are fun and the thing is that what you've got to really do as a teacher is create that environment and let then the students take command and you've just got to be the, there in the background, the facilitator of their learning, the facilitator of their understanding how to create that game. So, some of you may say, well, what about digital board games? And if you have a high-tech classroom and want to use those high-tech tools, that are available in your very lucky school because uh, not all schools have these tools at the moment but I know that they're growing and, and it's really great. Well, you can make digital board games and they're just as fun and exciting to create and you don't need any special programs. You can just use Google Slides, for example, on Google Drive and most schools have... Um, the Google Apps for Education so you're really not having any you're really not going to have any problems and you don't need students don't have their own Gmails and if you don't have Google Apps for Education you can just create a, a Gmail account for the whole class and just give them access to the uh, Google Slides they can take turns in adding to the um, game and it just makes it more fun anyway so you can even create things like Kahoot question games to coincide with the sections on the digital board uh, I haven't personally tried it yet but it has been on my list of uh, creating board games so I'm going to get there eventually so in this example that I've got here on the right, um, keeping it simple, is a board game that I created for a business English group. On the left of the figure eight, you'll see uh, the images with callouts that had to uh, were eliciting special speech or spoken uh, forms and then the on the right were the cards that um, when they showed up they had to follow the instructions of whatever the card said so that was one I created last year it was digitally uh, played on Google Slides and it was played by four students at a time situated in different areas of the country and it was uh, really fun to play. They enjoyed it. In fact, that hour and a half just flew by and they wanted to continue playing, which I think they did after the lesson. And that was just an example. Um, so you can really draw your own shapes. I In that one there I used a figure eight, but you can make S shapes or square shapes or um, just get any idea and basically put it together slowly and it doesn't take long and then you can hyperlink everything so all they need to do is actually click on the area that they've uh, fallen on with using the virtual dice and 
it's really good fun and you you just link up or hyperlink to other sections of that document or you can create other documents so it hyperlinks to external documents it doesn't have to be that one document just depends on what you want to do um, but remember keeping it simple especially at the beginning makes life a lot easier for you and it doesn't take a long time out of your weekly uh, class preparation and you can do this all on the interactive whiteboard in a classroom anyway with students that may have their own computers or tablets you can use virtual tool, tools like um, roll the dice um, so it's just a matter of finding one that you like and that's effective uh, and then there's a few examples here of the ones that I've used but I've also used others that I can't even remember but they're just as fun it just depends that, again it, this all goes back to the age group that you have so maybe you may want to use the digital uh, board game for the teenagers and keep to the paper uh, board games for the elementary or the younger student. So um, after this presentation for this week I would like you to create your own board game as an, and it doesn't have to be complicated. You can go to this website Tools for Educators and it's very very easy I have a video on how it was done last year here so you just can click on this one and it will take you to the YouTube uh, video that I did last year as a participant and it was it really it's on tools for educators creating your own board game takes something like 10 minutes so you can do that um, what I'd like to see is, you don't need to send me a PDF of the board game, what I'd like to see is an actual video tutorial of your process and the steps to make your board game. So no need for slides, just a video will do. And um, be creative. In the Tools for Educators there are and you'll see in my video you can create your own ideas, add your own ideas into that, into that, make them personal or uh, meaningful to what you're doing in your classroom now if you can or create one on Google Slides or uh, Google Forms, no not Google Forms, Google Slides or a Google Doc and hyperlink the images so have fun with that, I'm sure you will enjoy doing that. I've got some links that you can go to and have a look at some of the theory and information and what other people are doing with board games or how they're using board games or game based learning in the classroom. Here is a list of all the images that I've used in this particular presentation. This brings us to the end of our presentation so I'd like to say thank you for watching another presentation and thank you to Evo, TSOL EVO 2017 for organising another fully packed January full of wonderful people in and especially here in the Moodle and to Dr Nelly for organising the Teaching AFL to Young Learners in the Moodle for Teachers website so I look forward to seeing you in the forums this week let's enjoy another week of the EVO sessions.